may be complete. Thoroughly equipped for every good work. Thoroughly equipped for every good work. The Bible in and of itself puts you in a place where you are now prepared and equipped, not for a selective place, but the Bible says every good work. I love that. It means that if I diligently search the scriptures with an open mind and an open heart and a surrendered prayerful spirit, it means that the Bible will have value for every area of my life. You know, we as Christians and would-be Christians and potential Christians and former Christians, we somehow compartmentalize our lives by saying this part is the spiritual and this part is the secular. When in reality, it all is spiritual. And God's word equips us as Christians for every good word. An illustration I love to use. Let's say Cinder is on the ninth floor of a burning building. I hope this never happens to you, but you're on the ninth floor of a burning building. Everybody is evacuating because you were so diligent at your work, you didn't even notice the smoke alarms. You look up, and the place is on fire, so you stick your head out the window, and you're looking for some help. Okay? Both Pastor Tafel and myself come walking by. Now, I'm wearing a fire retardant suit. I have on boots. I have on a heavy jacket. I have an axe. I have on oxygen. I have on my side a small paramedics bag. I have a ladder. Wow, I'm, I'm walking down the street pretty prepared, aren't I? And lo and behold, I look up and there's Cinder on the ninth floor reaching out, needing some help. And then Pastor Tao Tao is strolling along from the other direction on his way to the beach. And all he has on is a pair of swim trunks and some flip flops. Yeah, maybe a hat, some sunscreen, I don't know. But as we walk by this burning building together, and Cinder's looking down at both of us, Pastor Tao Tao in his on my way to the beach outfit, and I in my on my way to save somebody outfit, who would you feel more comfortable scaling the ladder to save him? Me. Not because of anything that I've done, or not even because of who I am, but because I have come prepared and I've become, I have come equipped to do the task at hand. Oftentimes, too often, we as Christians move into an area unprepared for the task at hand. When the Bible clearly tells us that His Word will equip us for every good work. Now, you're ready for the beach, no problem. But not really ready to save someone in a burning building. And that's what God's Word prepares us for. Every good work. So we don't find ourselves out of sorts, but always in a position to help and to produce a positive witness for Jesus. Understand? Yes? Okay. Turn with me in your Bibles to Genesis. Genesis chapter 1. Now we have established the fact that God's Word, most of God's Word is inspired by God, right? How much? All. Are you sure? All. <sighs> Mr. Ranja, even the parts I don't like, is that still inspired by God? How about this? Can I pick and choose which parts of the Bible I want to follow and which parts I don't? <laughs> I was almost a trick question. I asked Mr. Ranja, can I pick and choose which part of the Bible I want to follow or not? And the reality is, I can choose which part of the Bible I want to follow or not, but that doesn't negate the fact that all of Scripture
Scripture is inspired by God. And so the choice that I make against Scripture has to be a conscious choice. Hey, I know this is not what God says, but I choose to do something different. All Scripture is inspired by God and is profitable for doctrine. It's a wonderful, secure thing. All right? We've established that. For the rest of the evenings, God's Word is the selling point. Not any way I present the Gospel or anything else. It's God's Word that's going to do it. Now, experiencing Jesus and His love is my favorite topic. And I was telling Pastor Montes before we started this evening that I had this sense of, of anticipation. Uh, it, it, it was in my stomach. It was kind of like butterflies, but not quite. Uh, this idea that I was going to get the opportunity to talk about the person that changed my life more than any other. And that's Jesus. The opportunity to share what that experience was for me. And hopefully, by God's grace, you too will have your own similar experience. And I think in order to get the full idea of what God and Jesus intends for us, we need to go all the way back to the beginning and kind of figure out how we got into this mess to begin with. Well, Jesus was the agent of creation. A homework assignment. Go home tonight and read in your Bibles Genesis chapter 1 to 4. Genesis chapter 1 to 4. Two reasons. Make sure everything I'm saying tonight is true. You have to check on the Bible, okay? Don't check on me to make sure the Bible is right. Check on the Bible to make sure what I'm saying is right. Chapter 1 through 4 gives you a real breakdown of how we got into this mess. God created, through the agency of His Son, Jesus Christ, this beautiful planet with everything on it that we could ever imagine. He made it perfect, complete. There was nothing here. Well... There was nothing that we would have for want. He created everything we could ever imagine. And even Adam, as he was naming all the animals, didn't realize that he was missing out on something. But God understood what would be best for Adam, even when Adam didn't even know it. And he was the first anesthesiologist. He put Adam to sleep, took a rib from his side, and created Eve. And I can just imagine what Adam thought when he saw Eve for the very first time. He thought he had it good already. And then he looks and sees Eve and realizes how much better he was going to have. And it seems to me God put them in this perfect scenario for success. But there's a question. And I've asked that question myself on a number of occasions. If God created this perfect world and a perfect garden of Eden for Adam and Eve to live in, why in the world would he take the risk of having them sin by placing the one thing that would cause them harm in the very middle of the garden? Hmm. Almost as if I was saying to my son and daughter, Ethan, okay, Ethan, I've got snacks for you, I've got a DVD for you, I've got a blanket for you, I've got some milk for you. You and Sarah just play nice right here in this room. I've got all your favorite DVDs, all your favorite coloring books, everything you could ever want. Just enjoy yourself. But, you see that basket of cookies over there on the table? You can have everything in this room you want, but don't touch that basket of cookies. All right, bye, I'll see you in a while. And you can imagine, well, you can't imagine, you actually know, because all of us have been there. You don't have to imagine. You're sitting there thinking to yourself, wow, I got my favorite DVD, I got my favorite coloring book, my favorite blankie, I've got my, wow, those aren't even my favorite cookies, but since Dad told us not to, there's something about them that I really, really want. And eventually, if time should be allowed, the kids will start playing somewhere near where the cookies are. Hmm. Hmm. 